Hi, I'm Jonathan Holland with the University of Minnesota Crookston. And with me today is Rob Prue, lecturer of agronomy from the Ag and Natural Resource Department at the University of Minnesota Crookston. Welcome, Rob. Thank you, Jonathan. Good to be here. So, Rob, let's start with um, a little bit about your background. Why don't you tell us where you're from and your education? Sure. So I'm actually from this, this region. I grew up on a farm um, a little bit north and east of Crookston here and um, never really knew that agriculture would be a part of my career path. I didn't really see myself farming and, and I didn't really know what direction I was going to go. So I started off as a business major um, for my undergraduate degree and then ended up transferring to the University of Minnesota Crookston, which is where I earned my agronomy uh, bachelor's degree. And then from there, I went to the uh, University of Minnesota Twin Cities campus and earned a master's degree in agronomy and started teaching here on campus uh, immediately after that. Uh, and then after teaching here for about two to three years, I started on a PhD in earth system science and policy. And I just finished that uh, just about two years ago. So kind of come full circle back to Crookston. Yeah, I, su I suppose you could say that. Nice. So when you realized that agronomy was your career track, I, how did that come about? Yeah, it's, um, I think where it really started for me was I had taken a job, um, just a summer job out of high school, working at uh, the Research and Outreach Center here in Crookston, which is another branch of the University of Minnesota. And it kind of opened my eyes to a little broader view of what agriculture or agronomy could be. Um, you know, I, like I mentioned, I didn't really see farming as being uh, my career path, but this kind of opened my eyes to the fact that there are so many opportunities out there, even if you don't think you want to be a full-time farmer in, in agronomy and in agriculture. So I think that's really what kind of um, started me on the path towards this towards this career and into the field of agronomy. And then from there, it's just been kind of following the different opportunities as they, as they come and, and, and just keep pushing forward. So if somebody wasn't familiar with agronomy, how would you describe it or tell them what agronomy is? I would probably say in the most basic sense, agronomy would is the science of crop production and especially the science of plant production. Um, if I were feeling really philosophical, I might say it's you know the harnessing of the sun and the soil and air and water through the beauty of plants and, and making food from those plants. And that's kind of basically you know the essentials of it, what it comes down to is really helping um, farmers, producers to harness the resources that they have to produce food crops or fiber crops or fuel crops as efficiently as they can and as profitably and environmentally um, sound as they can. Okay. For somebody that grew up um, in a farming community, I think that's probably the most awesome description I've ever heard of agronomy. So kudos to you. That's oh, thank you. very impressive. So what makes the agronomy program at UMN Crookston special or unique? I think, I think one of the things that makes it special is, you know, one of the things we talk about as a campus more broadly is just the opportunity for students to connect with their faculty members, just due to the emphasis on teaching and advising that we place here. So I am a full-time teaching faculty member. I teach courses at all the different uh, grade levels. So I, I interact with students from the very first semester on campus to their very last semester on campus before graduation. I see them all along the way. So I get to know them pretty well. They get to know me pretty well. And we get to work closely together as they advance through the program. So I say that's one of the, um, one of the strong aspects that we have. Uh, another I would say is, you know, within the courses, a commitment to experiential learning and, and hands-on learning. Um, where that 
comes in for agronomy is doing a lot of things in uh, the campus greenhouses, doing some things in the laboratories and um, getting outside to, to do a few labs on some of the fields that surround campus as well. And then taking in some field trips of some area businesses as part of that, that experience. So I'd say the hands-on experiential learning would be a second aspect. Um, and then a third, I would say, would be um, just kind of the broad-based overview into agronomy that you get. Um, we, maybe more so than a crop science program, really try to give students a little bit of background into the whole broad array of possible agronomy careers. And where that really comes, where it really becomes different is more along the, the seed and grain industries, which are an important part of agronomy of the agricultural industry, but aren't necessarily given a, a lot of attention in all programs that focus more strictly on, on plant and, and soil science. So really trying to give students a broad-based overview uh, of agronomy is another one of our, I would say, more unique aspects. So along with that, um, what would you say the impact of UMN Crookston's agronomy program is not just in the local Crookston area, but in Northwest Minnesota and, and Northeast North Dakota as well? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I, you know, our, our graduates, they, they can go anywhere. And we have graduates, we have students who've come from, um, you know, other areas of the country and who've spread back out to other areas of the country. But specific to our region, I think we've kind of established ourselves as having a strong agronomy program and strong agriculture programs broadly. And our agronomy graduates have become, you know, pretty well embedded in a lot of the different uh, a lot of the different companies in this region. You know, I, one concrete example I could point to, I was, I just noticed over the cap, over the course of about the past six months or so that American Crystal Sugar Company, which is, uh, you know, a company that a lot of folks in the region are familiar with, it's incredibly important to our regional economy, and of their agriculturalist staff, so the folks who go out in the field and work with farmers to produce their sugar beet crops, something like a third of those uh, of those individuals are names that I recognize as coming through our agronomy program. And they're, in that case, they're all either students that I taught or they're ones who are about the same age as me. So I recognize them as have coming through the program. So there might even be a few more that, you know, were on campus and graduated before my time. So that's just one example, uh, I, I think that, that helps to illustrate the impact that our graduates can have on our, um, on our region. Wow, that's super powerful stuff when you can see those graduates employed right there um, in such a major industry and in the region. So that's awesome. If you had to isolate one thing, what's your favorite thing about teaching agronomy at UMN Crookston? Isolate one thing. Um, boy, I think for me, Probably the one favorite thing of teaching agronomy at UMN Crookston is something that's really starting to develop since I've finished my, my PhD. And that's really trying to improve my understanding of pedagogy, so you know, of effective teaching and learning practices, and really trying to apply that into the courses that I teach. So I I feel like un, you know my understanding of the of the fundamentals of agronomy and crop production, that's been there since the beginning and I'm still learning new things all the time, but um, that's not necessarily a huge transformational shift, but this trying to better understand how to best serve students and how to best organize courses and how to best um, run a classroom to um, provide them with the, with the best learning opportunities possible is something that's really kind of drawn my interest now that I've been able to, to devote a lot more time to it. So that's, uh, right now I'd say that's probably the, the, the thing that I enjoy doing most here in my, in my courses. And I, I can see that there 
will always be room to, to tweak and improve and to keep things fresh uh, with this mindset. That's great. I, and certainly that circles right back to your emphasis early for it saying that um, the relationship between faculty and students on, on the UMN Crookston campus is so important. And that's a great illustration of that. So thanks for that. Um, so far in your career, any one moment that stands out as being special or impactful in your life? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, I probably think of two moments that have been, one that was particularly impactful in shaping my career. And then another one more recently that's kind of been um, kind of a nice, I don't know, kind of a nice bit of input as to how, you know, how my career is going. I, one moment I can remember that that shaped my my career here is my time as a student and working with my advisor at the time, uh, Chuck Habstreet is his name. And I never really considered graduate school as a possibility. It, it was something I really had no concept of with my background. I just really didn't hardly even really thought about it as being a possibility. And um, I was nearing graduation. I was starting my last semester here uh, on campus. And he kind of put this idea in my mind and said, you know, you really should think about going to graduate school. And he kind of cleared up some misconceptions I had about the process and, and helped me start thinking about what it would take to apply and, and be accepted and, and go through that whole process. And, um, and really without that intervention, I, I really... I mean, I wouldn't be teaching here today. I, I wouldn't have the necessary qualifications and necessary education to be to be teaching undergraduate courses. So, um, you know, without that guidance and without his input, I I wouldn't be on the same career path that I'm on right now. Um, so that was definitely a real formative moment for me, and I think you know helps to illustrate that you know when you can make that connection with your faculty members, they get to know you. They can give you advice that you maybe couldn't get if they didn't know you that well. Um, and then another more recent kind of touchstone for me was uh, in a few years ago, uh, at the end of 2018, I uh, received an award from my, from my peers for distinguished teaching on campus. So I, um, that you know, very nice honor to receive and to be recognized for, for those achievements. And um, it's, I would say that, that having that recognition, though, was just kind of fueled me to, to keep pushing forward and, and improving my, my craft as, as an instructor. That's awesome. And congrats um, uh, on a great award from your peers. Yeah, thank you. So let's, let's delve into a, a pretty current topic, and that is um, COVID-19 and the pandemic that has been ongoing now, um, not just in our country, but across the world. Um, is there anything that has changed in how agriculture um, marches on through this pandemic or anything that stays constant with agriculture, even in a pandemic situation? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. I think, um, I think one of the early lessons is that from when the whole world hit pause and in March of 2020 is that, you know, nothing was really spared. Um, you know, agricultural supply chains, even someone like me, who's not an expert in this area, I notice these things, you, you get shortages of certain food items in, in grocery stores, or I'd hear stories about excess production that was, that was going to waste. I know I, I heard about potato production was one example that without, with so many fewer restaurants being open, less demand for some of the the frozen potato products like french fries um, that a lot of potatoes went to waste because the supply chain couldn't you know move them through fast enough so i think there's that was one of the lessons i think that you know you can get these shocks to the system that you know even the no industries are are immune from even those that are essential like like agriculture but i think another lesson that was learned is that um you know, the show must go on when it comes to, to agriculture. I know my, you know, to use a example that's close to me, I, 
had a lot of students, um, or I had a lot of conversations with students last spring, um, spring of 2020 about their internship plans. And, you know, at this point we had been, the campus had been closed, all of our courses were completely online, uh, but they still were almost uniformly able to look forward to the opportunities that they were still gonna have in their internships. Those internships looked different. Um, you know, the operations were a bit different uh, with you know COVID protocols and things, but they were still able to get out into the workforce and do some of the very um, real work that they um, would have always been doing as interns. And you know, I had conversations with a few students. I said, you know, you're in an air, you're in a field that it's almost ideal for being able to to maintain distance from folks because you might be out scouting fields and you're out on a four-wheeler kind of you know, working independently for most of the day and you still can interact with folks, but you can stand, you know, six or more feet away from them and kind of talk from a distance. So um, I think that was another one of the lessons is that, you know, it was an, an industry that's completely essential because feeding people is completely essential. So the, the operations still go on. And when so much of your work is, is based on helping farmers grow crops and it's based on being outdoors, uh, a lot of those activities were still, still able to continue even even in a pandemic. All right, so um, in talking about um, the need for economic growth and diversification, um, minimizing our dependence on vulnerable ag resources, research suggests that the main and increasingly serious impacts of climate change on agriculture will occur after 2030. Many people say that eating less meat in rich countries could help to reduce hunger in developing countries and the way we Americans and Minnesotans do business. Do you think this is an opportunity for professionals like you in the field of agronomy or agriculture in general? Yeah, I think um, with the changes going that are already starting to occur and that are really projected to accelerate with, the climate generally getting warmer and with rainfall patterns kind of shifting around, I think there definitely are opportunities um, in agriculture to respond to those. I, I think the challenge is really going to be to kind of anticipate the changes that need to be made and then being able to move fast enough to implement them when they come. Um, I think a lot of the work that's going on now you're, is probably happening more so in the research and development arenas than the production arena. So universities and private companies trying to develop more climate tolerant crops, crops that can better withstand moisture stress or drought stress or heat stress. Um, being one example of, of some ongoing efforts. Uh, but I think another kind of more production based trend that I've been noticing uh, in this region, especially in, in the Eastern North Dakota is, you know, more and more farmers showing an interest in, in soil health practices and in building the health of their soils and building their soils ability to, to store water and resist erosion and uh, be more functional uh, in their cropping systems. And I can see a lot of parallels between building those healthier soils and building uh, a cropping system that's more resilient to changing climate. So I think that those farmers who are embracing that mindset right now around building soil health are probably going to reap some benefits if we do trend, uh, you know, as our climate uh, changes moving forward. And, <clears throat> and, and I, based on what I've so I took part in a, in a virtual conference a few weeks ago and one of the presenters was the North Dakota state or assistant state climatologist. And, and his prediction is that we're, we're due to trend into a, a dry cycle here fairly soon. Our region's been in a wet cycle since about 1993. Um, and the, those wet cycles tend to, to not last that much longer than what we've, what we've already had. So um, although the, the, biggest impacts of this kind of global climate change are pro projected to occur, you know, in 2030 or later, you might see farmers regionally, locally experiencing some levels of moisture stress that they haven't been used to since about the 1980s, even within the next, you know, it, his prediction was correct within the next, you know, two to five years. So 
Um, I think that keeping mindful of some of these changes and, and really paying attention to your to to their own fields and really trying to implement practices that'll kind of build the resiliency of their cropping systems is one way that that farmers can kind of chart their own path in responding to climate, but then also um, trying to to bring in the different or the new innovations um, and varieties and production practices that'll be coming from the research and development arena will be a second part of kind of responding to some of these climate challenges. Rob, that's just awesome. I mean, the, as with anything, change can also bring opportunity. So uh, those instances of, of how farmers and agriculture are adapting um, makes for a bright outlook for students in agriculture and agronomy at UMN Crookston. So that's exciting to hear. Rob, this has been a fascinating interview and I thank you so much. But before we go, I just have to ask, is there anyone um, that you wanna give a shout out to? Maybe somebody that's impacted your life um, or helped you impact your students' lives? Wow, I think, I don't know if I was anticipating this, this question. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I already gave, I, I gave one shout out already. I don't know if he would see this, but uh, Chuck Habstreet, who was in this role uh, prior to my being here and is now enjoying the retired life, splitting his time between Minnesota and Arizona, definitely give give him a shout out for all that he's done to help set me on, on this path um, and kind of keep the tradition, keep the tradition going here at the University of Minnesota Crookston. Rob, that's awesome. And I would say that Chuck has definitely um, left the agronomy program at UMN Crookston in great hands. So thanks for your time and your continued work with the students at UMN Crookston. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan.